So let's talk about the patient-doctor relationship, as I'm sure a lot of people are wondering about. Is it possible that your doctor is over-diagnosing when it comes to vitamin D deficiency? For my practice, I mostly see people who have been underdiagnosed or have failed to di be diagnosed with vitamin D deficiency despite severe symptoms and despite multiple pharmaceuticals that they're on and long workups. So that's one thing. So, so we may be overdiagnosing in the healthy population, mm -hmm. but in the unhealthy population, it's clearly being undiagnosed. Um, additionally, low vitamin D is really important in a number of conditions. For example, in breast cancer, Vitamin D levels greater than 40 allow women to stay on life-saving aromatase inhibitor therapies, which cause arthralgias. Multiple, several clinical trials have uh, suggested that. Clinical experience, uh, from my perspective, is yes, absolutely, that's important. Statin myalgias, people in cardiovascular disease who develop muscle aches and pains um, while on a, another life-saving medication, or at least preventative medication, um, you normalize their vitamin D levels, it goes away. So the list goes on and on. We look at, at pain status and functional status and lupus and other diseases and I say, good grief. When someone has a serious disease, we should at least get one vitamin D level on them. We think nothing of getting cholesterol level. We get cholesterol levels one, two, three times a year sometimes when people think nothing of it. Think nothing of getting a B12 level. Think nothing of getting and calcium level or sodium level or potassium level, but all of a sudden we start uh, checking a vitamin D level and, and it arouses national concern. And um, yes, vitamin D levels have gone, testing has gone up significantly, but I think we're going to see more and more studies showing that actually, that actually is going to end up saving money. Mm. And, um, and so that speculation, we'll see. You know, it could be proven wrong.